Cam here from Xano Support, and today we're going to be exploring how to create a Discord bot that sends messages to one of our text channels, all inside Xano, all under five minutes. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Now that we're inside Xano, we have the option of thinking of how often we want to send these messages to our Discord channel, as well as the content that we're sending to our Discord channel. The best way to do that inside Xano is with our tasks, which allows us to set business logic that just runs at a scheduled time. You'll navigate to your tasks and the top right, you'll select the blue add task button. You can go ahead and give it a name. I've given mine the name of Xanobot. Inside Xanobot, we're met with a function stack and our timing. So our function stack where all the business logic is ran and our timing where we get to set how often we want this task to run. What we wanna do is we wanna be able to reference our messages here. So what we have and what's often referred to as a dictionary is in spirit of development and working with Xano, a list of software puns. It's an object here with keys, one, two, three, four, and five, representing the day of the week with a value of an array at each key. We have some variability between our options here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what day of the week is it? Select the option and then randomly extract that particular item found at a random index. The way to do this inside Xano is we'll go ahead and navigate back over into our task and we'll go ahead and add our function and we'll create a variable and we'll just have our messages live within this task. Selecting the value, you can just paste in all of that JSON and you have the option of selecting raw JSON or with filters. I'll go ahead and select raw JSON and click save. The next thing we want to do is be able to determine what the day is. The way that we're going to do this is very similar by creating a variable. We'll change that variable name to day, and then the value will be now, which you could type out, and it's a timestamp. We can hover over it and click this blue button, which then allows us to format our timestamp. This is going to accept a formatted value, and then the output there will be uh, a human readable form, different than a timestamp. If we head to our PHP page, it'll be linked in our description that goes over timestamps and the formats. We can see here that capital N represents an ISO 8601 numeric representation of the day of the week with one for Monday and seven for Sunday. So we have the option of passing in N into this expression or into this input box. We also have the ability to select W, which is just a numeric representation of the day of the week with zero for Sunday and six for Saturday. So a little different depending on how you want to go ahead and approach this, but this is going to be a work week related bot. So we'll stick with capital N. You then have the option of changing your time zone. And for now, we'll just go ahead and select UTC and we'll select update and save. One thing that we can do within tasks to be able to see what data we're dealing with is by adding a stop and debug. You can find this at the very top here. It's a favorite in function with this gold star. You can just go ahead and click stop and debug. And it allows you to pass in a variable in the preceding bits of the function stack to then print to the run and debug screen. We'll select day here and we'll click run and debug and run. And we can see that the number is five. So we have our messages and our day. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create another variable here. And this variable is going to be our message to send. The value is going to be our messages. And then we're going to use a get filter to look through this object and select the value with the day key. So we'll click save and then run again. And we need to update our stop and debug to that message to send value. And we can see here that when we click run and debug again, we have these three items. Once we have the message to send, the next thing that we have to think about is, well, how do we get a random bit here from our list? The way that we can do that is by selecting that blue plus sign, we'll navigate to our security tab and we'll go ahead and find the random number. In this case, I want it to be zero through two, zero being the first position of this list, one being the second position and two being the last position of this list. Now what I want to do is I want to under generate random number. I want to go ahead and find our update variable function. So I'll select update variable, which allows me to select any variables that preceded this bit in the function stack. I want to go ahead and update message to send, and I want to update it with itself. I'll hover over that value and I'll select the gray use expression button, which very similar to traditional programming inside our editor here with the transform engine, we can actually manipulate our data with a written syntax. I'll go ahead and specify that I want an item from this list with these two brackets. 
And now what I want to do is I want to pass in the variable of our random number. Before I do this, I do need to update. So I'll make sure I click all of my save buttons, but I need to update my random number variable name. I'll type out random number, click save. And now back inside my expression, I'll be able to reference it by either selecting the random number value as is displayed within this pop-up, or I can type it out using dollar sign var and then random number. I'll update and close this and I'll click save. I'm then going to go ahead and keep my message to send value within my stop and debug because I shouldn't need to update that. I've just updated that message to send. So we'll click run again and we can see here if we repeatedly click this run again button, it does look like we are able to cycle randomly through these messages. Perfect. That leaves us one other step apart from scheduling, of course, our bot here. What that looks like is, well, sending a request to our Discord channel. How do we do that? Well, first off, you need to head to Discord and you need a channel that you can send texts to. You'll select this edit channel or this gear icon and then go to integrations where you'll create a webhook. It creates a webhook name for you automatically. You can change this to anything that you'd like and select where it goes. In this case, just the general channel, but I'll copy this webhook URL and I'll save changes. Back inside Xana, I'm now going to, under my update variable, I'll go ahead and start an external API request. First off, we're going to want to go ahead and pass in that URL that's in our clipboard. Then we want to go ahead and select post because we're going to be sending data. The next thing we want to do is set our parameters. Fortunately for this bot, it's really simple. We're hovering over our parameters input and we'll select this blue set button. Here we have the ability to specify a path and a value. So we're just creating an object that we're going to be sending within the body. The path will be content and then the value will be that message to send. I'll go ahead and select update and I'll go ahead and click save. Now what we can do is we can publish our changes and we'll click on this run and debug button. Now, ideally, when we click this, what'll happen is our list of messages will load. We'll be able to determine the day of the week. We'll then get to find all of the messages that are relevant to that day of the week. We're gonna generate a random number, zero through two, that simulates the index that we wanna go ahead and find. We then update that message to send by taking that list and saying, at this index value, please return the value. And then we send that result to Discord. We'll go ahead and click run. We can see that this message did send. And if we go back into our Discord channel, we could see here that we were able to send a joke. So the only other thing that we probably want to consider here is just setting that scheduled task. Let's go ahead and delete our stop and debug here. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a schedule in our timing block. We're going to say that it starts at a particular time. So we just select in our calendar that it starts at 9 a.m. on Friday, and we'll repeat it. It is going to ask us how often we want to repeat it, and we have the ability to say every 24 hours or even as low as five seconds up to every four weeks. You have some definite variability here to being able to select its frequency. And then we can also select an ends, but maybe we never want it to end. We'll go ahead and click Save, and we'll go ahead and click Enable Task. Once the task has been enabled, you can go ahead and select Publish, so what we've been able to do today is create a Discord bot that sends messages every 24 hours to your Discord text channel, all with Xano and Xano's tasks. You have so many more options, of course, in terms of customization. Maybe you're interacting with your data table and loading data there, or even communicating with a third party service. You could do a lot within this business logic and then send it on over to Discord. Using Xano, you have the ability to sort of connect the internet together. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those within the comment section below. Otherwise, you can also reach out to us within your instance by selecting the support chat on the left-hand side or even starting a conversation within the community. Thanks so much for watching. It'll be really cool to see all the things that you built.